Hi there, welcome to Sir Mathego channel. Today I am going to discuss the difference in solving right triangle and oblique triangle. The triangle to the left is a right triangle with these given parts. We have 6, 8, and 10. While the triangle to the right is an oblique triangle with the given parts 8, 10, 14. How do we solve these two triangles and uh, what is their difference? The first triangle at the left can be solved using trigonometric ratios. Let us solve the first acute angle and we call it angle X. To solve angle X, we are going to use sine ratio. So we say sine X is equal to 6 over 10. X is equal to the inverse of sine 6 over 10. X is equal to 36.8 degrees. Since this triangle is a right triangle, we can find the third angle using the angle sum theorem. The third angle is denoted by Z. So, using the angle sum theorem, we have 90 degrees plus 36.8 degrees plus Z equals 180 degrees. 90 plus 36.8 is 126.8 degrees plus Z equals 180 degrees. Now, we can subtract both sides by 126.8 degrees. So, the value for angle Z is equal to 53.2 degrees. Next is we have this oblique triangle with the given parts 8, 10, and 14. For this oblique triangle, we can see that the given parts are the three sides or SSS. This is a condition wherein we can apply the law of cosines. Let's indicate the angle as angle A, angle B, and angle C respectively. By applying the law of cosine, we state the following. The law of cosine states that the square of the length of one side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus the product of twice the two sides and the cosine of the angle between them. We will use this law of cosines to solve all the angles of this oblique triangle. So, if we want to solve angle A, the side opposite to angle A is side BC, which is 8 in measure. We start by squaring 8. So, we say 8 squared is equal to 14 squared plus 10 squared. This is the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The other two sides are 14 and 10. Next, we have minus 2 times 14 times 10 times cosine A. This is the translation of minus the product of twice the other two sides and the cosine of the angle between them. Let's start solving angle A. Eight squared is sixty-four, fourteen squared is one hundred ninety-six, ten squared is one hundred. Negative two times fourteen times ten is negative two hundred eighty times cosine A. Bring down sixty-four. One hundred ninety-six plus one hundred is two hundred ninety-six. Bring down negative two hundred eighty and cosine A. Subtract both sides by 296. So, 64 minus 296 is equal to negative 280 cosine A. 64 minus 296 is negative 232. Bring down negative 280 cosine A. Divide both sides by negative 280. 0 0.83 is equal to cosine 
A. A is equal to inverse cosine 0 0.83. So A is approximately 34.1 degrees. To solve for angle B, we can use either the law of sines or the law of cosines. But for familiarity, let us just apply the law of cosines. Let us solve angle B. We look at the measure of the side opposite to angle B, and it is 10. And now we have 10 squared is equal to 14 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 14 times 8 times cosine B. This is our translation using the law of cosines. Again, we are looking for angle B. 10 squared is 100. 14 squared plus 8 squared is 260. Negative 2 times 14 times 8 is negative 224. Subtract both sides by 260. And we have 100 minus 260 is equal to negative 224 times cosine b. 100 minus 260 is negative 160. Bring down negative 224 cosine b. Divide both sides by negative 224. We have 0 0.7143 is equal to cosine b. b is equal to inverse cosine 0 0.7143. Finally, b is equal to 44.4 degrees. Let us now find angle C. To find angle C, we have the option to use law of cosines or to use the angle sum theorem for triangles. But to easily calculate angle C, we can choose the angle sum theorem for triangles. So we have 44.4 degrees plus 34.1 degrees plus C is equal to 180 degrees. 44.4 degrees plus 34.1 degrees is 78.5 degrees. Subtract both sides by 78.5 degrees. We have finally C is equal to 101.5 degrees. Now we are able to see the difference in solving these two types of triangles. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.